Welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY, where crafting and mental health come together. In today's DIY video, grab Dollar Tree items for high-end spring decor DIYs. Hello again, my DIY loving friends. Are you looking for some high-end spring decor inspiration on a budget? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to create stunning spring decor using mostly items from the Dollar Tree. Yep, we're turning Dollar Tree goods into designer-worthy decor, quick and easy. Get ready to make the magic happen and let's go DIY together. So stick around, well, let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. For this first DIY, I'm using two Dollar Tree mop heads that I had on hand and they are the older, really bright white ones, which are kind of different looking than the ones they carry now. But anyway, I'm also using this large foam ball I had in my stash. I've poked a large hole through the middle of the ball, first with the skewer and then with some progressively larger objects. I'm also using about an eighth of a roll of toilet paper. Weird, I know. <laughs> And these older mop heads are really hard to open. The new ones just unsnap super easy, but I could not pry this open. So I end up pulling small bunches of mop rope out until all of the pieces are out. I did have to do that for the other mop, but later on. Now I need to fit the whole bunch of mop rope through the middle of that foam ball, which is no easy feat. I did end up wrapping one end of the rope tightly with painter's tape and basically stuffing it through that hole so that I had the foam ball in the middle of the bunch of mop rope. I removed all the tape and I slid the ball down so it was about two thirds down onto the rope. So there was a short side and a long side. And then I had to re-tape that long side so I could stuff that through the middle of my toilet paper roll. I know it's funny looking, but trust the process. And then I adjust the ball and the TP roll. Let's just call it TP because toilet paper is too long. So there is enough length of rope on the ball side to fully cover that ball and a little of the toilet paper roll as well with just mostly short little pieces hanging out of the bottom of that TP roll. Then out of the rope at the top of the ball, I dig through for two long pieces of rope and tie them together. That's gonna be the hanger for my giant tassel. Spoiler alert, we're making a giant tassel. Then pushing those tied hanger pieces to the side, I try and smooth out the rope to cover the foam ball and ultimately decide I'm gonna need to unravel all those pieces in order to get really good coverage over the foam ball. So I unravel them. With the rope unraveled, I have enough coverage for the ball and I smooth those strings over the ball, making sure I don't include the hanger pieces that we pushed aside and I just want a nice smooth rope covered ball. I use a piece of jute twine to tightly tie a knot around the base of the ball, which is actually that toilet paper roll underneath, but we tie it tightly to give that foam ball a nice ball shape. I put the ball to the side and open another mop and I pry those pieces of rope out of it. But this time I take that rope and I fold all the pieces in half and then cut all of the rope into two pieces. I cut a piece of Dollar Tree lace ribbon long enough to fit around the base of that ball twice. And then using some hot glue, I glue the individual pieces of rope to the front of that ribbon. And I'm just leaving a little space at the beginning of the ribbon and at the end to make it easier to put on the ball, but I'm going to fill it all up with that rope. And then I take that rope covered ribbon and with the ribbon side facing inward so that the rope side is facing outward, I'm gonna wrap the ribbon around the base of the foam ball, wrapping it around twice and then pulling it tightly before securing the two ends of ribbon with some hot glue and trimming off the excess ribbon. Next, I grab a bag of those tiny clear elastic bands from Dollar Tree and going around the top layer of hanging rope, I gather four pieces of rope and use the elastic to tie them together. Then I grab the four pieces next to that and use another elastic to gather those four together. And I'm going to do this all around the entire tassel. Then I take a small piece of jute twine and tie it around the elastic to cover up all those elastic bands with pieces of jute. And yes, I know using the elastic bands on the tassel is cheating, but I am just a big old tassel cheater. Some people cheat on their taxes. I cheat on my tassels and I am encouraging you to do the same. Then I take two pieces of rope from one four piece bunch and two pieces of rope from another four piece bunch next to that. And I'm gonna use another elastic band and attach them together. Then I take those remaining two pieces and attach those to the two pieces from the four piece bunch next to that. And so on and so on all the way around the tassel as you can see me do right here. 
And then we will cover all those elastic bands with pieces of jute as well, because once a cheater, always a cheater, <laughs> at least when it comes to tassels. And we're going to do one more row of attaching two from one bunch to two from the next bunch with elastic bands, and we'll go around the entire tassel to finish that row. And of course, that means another round of covering up the evidence with some pieces of jute twine. And I'm going to do my best here to explain this clearly, but you might want to pause the video and go back a couple of times throughout the section if you get confused. I take one piece of white kitchen string long enough to wrap around the tassel, and then I cut three long pieces of kitchen string plus three long pieces of jute twine. I fold all of those pieces in half and tie the folded piece onto the first piece of kitchen string that we cut. I'm alternating a white piece, then jute, then white, then jute, and I am tying six pieces of jute and string to that string but really we now have 12 single strings hanging down and hopefully that makes sense to you so there's 12 individual pieces of string and we are going to be working with the full folded over string so two pieces will count as one so let's just say we have six pieces of string in front of us three white three brown i tape down the original string so that they are tied down taut and they stay taut I'm gonna slow down the video for this first row. So we take the first piece of brown string and we are going to weave it to the other side. So it goes under the white string next to it, over the brown stri uh, string that's next to that, under the white string next to that, over the brown string, and under that last white string. And now that brown piece of string we're working with becomes the last string for that first row. So for our second row, the first string is this white string. It goes under the brown, over the white, under the brown, over the white. And then it's going to go under this last brown piece over here. And now this white string becomes our last string in that row. And we're just going to keep following the same um, routine. And this next row is going to start with a piece of brown string going under the white and we're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over. And if this looks at all familiar to you, it it's just like those friendship bracelets we used to make as kids. It's basically the same weave as that. So when I have a woven band long enough to go around the tassel head, I'm gonna use some dabs of hot glue on each string to secure it and then cut the excess off with a scissors. Then I glue one end of the woven band onto the base of the tassel head and I tightly wrap the rest of the band around it, secure it with some hot glue and I trim the edges away. I had one large and two smaller beads lying around that were already stained and I asked my husband to drill the holes in them a tiny bit bigger so they would fit over the two tied pieces of mop rope that we separated at the beginning of the project to use as a hanger. And I strung the beads on, I used some hot glue to help secure the hanger into that foam ball and to secure the beads onto the top of the tassel head and on the hanger rope. And all that was left to do was unravel all those hanging pieces of rope at the bottom of the tassel, fluff them up, and give them a little haircut to even them out. And this is my giant decorative tassel made out of mop heads. Remember guys, this is mop heads, toilet paper, and a foam ball, and all things considered, I think this is a really impressive piece of decor. It looks amazing on a door handle or even a draw pole, anywhere you put a tassel. This is a gorgeous addition to your home decor, and we may have taken a few shortcuts to make it, but no one is going to judge you when the results look like this. This next DIY begins with this square plastic vase from Dollar Tree as well as a small square bowl that comes in a pack from Dollar Tree and several wooden skewers also from Dollar Tree. I'm using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Oatmeal which I will link in the description box below for you. I start by painting both the vase and the bowl with the oatmeal chalk paint. I end up doing two coats to fully cover them and to make them totally opaque. Next, I use a dry brush and some folk art antique wax, which I will link for you below. And I'm going to roughly dry brush the wax onto the vase and onto the bowl, going heavier in some areas, lighter in others, and really emphasizing the edges on all sides. I'm just trying to distress both pieces so they look authentically aged. 
Next, I took about 20 wood half rounds, which I'll link for you below, and a handful of skewers, since I wasn't sure exactly how many of them I was gonna use. And I'm staining them using a mixture of the antique wax and plain water, and I'm wiping off the excess with a dry paper towel. I hot glued five half rounds to each side of the top of the vase, spacing them out as evenly as I could. Then I used a wire cutters and I trimmed the skewers to the correct size that they would fit all four corners of the vase and all four corners of the bowl. Next, I used hot glue to attach one trimmed skewer in each of, to each of the four corners of the bowl and each of the four corners of the vase. Lastly, I hot glued the bottom of the vase to the bottom of the bowl. And this is my quote unquote wood pedestal vase. I am not really sure how to classify this, but I think I'm going with modern rustic. The shapes are modern, the finish is rustic, and I'm not sure it's realistically wood-like, but it does have a wood feel and it's a really unique piece and definitely a conversation starter. This next DIY starts with three large wood squares from Dollar Tree, although technically I only end up using two of them. I am using apple barrel acrylic paint in matte black mixed with water to give the wood a dark black stained kind of a finish. I stain the tops and the sides of the wood, but not the bottoms because I have something else in mind for that and I'm wiping off the excess stain with a dry paper towel. I cut three pieces of shelf liner, which you can get at Dollar Tree, the same size as the wood pieces, which was five and a half by five and a half. Then I hot glued the shelf liner to the bottom of the squares and did that with the printed side facing the wood because I wanted the white shelf liner bottoms to be the bottoms of my, spoiler alert, coasters. We are making coasters. I grabbed a bunch of Black River rocks from Dollar Tree and I had already sorted through them and picked out the flattest rocks of the bunch. I'm gonna be using E6000, which I will link for you below, to attach the rocks to the wood because A, I wanna use these outside and the E6000 is very good for outside items and B, because these rocks can make the project pretty heavy and I, I'm not sure hot glue is gonna be able to support it. So I am going to assemble my flat rocks on the square and then glue each one down individually until both squ uh, squares were covered with rocks. I also had to be conscious of trying to make the surface of both coasters relatively level because I need to be able to rest things on top of it, they're coasters, so there were no fat or tall rocks used. Also, once the glue dries, you can seal these with an outdoor Mod Podge to make them water resistant or spray sealer to waterproof them. And these are my River Rock coasters. And honestly, they're a little big for coasters. I will most likely use them for candles outside on the patio. I love River Rocks and I think they elevate any project to the next level. And these coasters, though simple, are no exception. A classic for sure. And as usual, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these Dollar Tree high-end spring decor DIYs is your favorite and why. I really love hearing from you. And if you've enjoyed this DIY video, there's another one waiting for you. Just click that link in the upper right corner for more Medicated Housewife DIYs. Until next time, my name is Sarah. I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.